worksheet number five, number two. Ah, uh, sines and cosines mixed in there, so I need to replace somebody. At least it's just sines and cosines. That's the, I think, the easy one. Sine squared plus cosine squared is one. So who do I want to replace? Do I want to replace cosine squared or sine squared? Why do I want to replace cosine squared? Because yeah, everything else is sine. So if I get rid of the cosine squared and put something with sines in there, then everything will be in terms of sines. So cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. So 2 equals 1 minus sine squared plus 3 sine theta minus sine squared theta. Let's see. I'm going to end up with negative 2 sine squared theta, which I don't really like, but I'll fix it later. So negative 2 sine squared theta plus 3 sine theta. And then if I move the 2 over, minus 1. So combine some terms, move some things around. If you're interested, you're welcome to factor it while it looks like that. I don't want to factor it while it looks like that. I want to do something that I think will make my life a little bit easier. What do you? What am I thinking about doing? Multiply yeah, let's multiply everybody by negative one. That way, I, I mean, you can factor it with a negative there. You just got to be super careful with all the pluses and minuses. Because there's a minus sine squared here and another minus sine squared there. So that made negative 2 sine squared. So let's multiply everybody by negative 1. I think that will make my life easier in terms of factoring. Speaking of making my life easier, there's more work, there's more space on this worksheet to work. Don't have to write so small. All right, so let's factor this guy now. Again, you can use the U's if you want to. But I think once you've done some of these, you know, it's the same thing. It's just if you really don't like looking at signs, you can put U's in there. All right, it's got to be 2 and 1 in order to get 2 sine squared. It's got to be 1 and 1 in order to get 1. And both signs need to be the same to make the last sign positive. And I want the middle sign to be negative. So if they're both negative, I think that will work. Again, your check is the, the O and the I, or the double smiley face, if you will. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So set them both equal to 0. Um, yeah, some people skip that step and jump straight to sine of theta equals one half and sine of theta equals one. Now, I'm not really, I'm not done with the problem, but I've said it already a couple times a day. This is the point of factoring. You take an impossible problem and you turn it into two hopefully easy problems. Sine of theta is one half. Let's see. First quadrant and second quadrant. Let's see. One half is the short side, so I need the y side to be the short side. So that happens at pi over 6. And where else does it happen? I know it's over 6 because the reference angle thing. So what's over 6 in the second quadrant? 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. And the pi minus rule works, right? If you get one answer, pi over 6, pi minus pi over 6 gives you 5 pi over 6. 
So I'm not supposed to need the, the pi minus rule because this is a unit circle problem. But if I get stuck, it still works. And then uh, a somewhat common mistake is that, you know, you do all that work and you forget to actually solve the other half of the problem. So sine is equal to 1 up there. Well, up there would be pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. That's only one answer. Let's see if that makes sense. The other answer is usually pi minus the first answer. What's pi minus pi over 2? <laughs> pi over 2. So that's why there's only one answer. And so there's our three sets of answers to that problem. So that one had factoring, it had substitution, had the sign rule, a lot of stuff going on in number two. Let's look at number six. It looks bad, but let's move everything to one side and see what happens. So I need to move the tangent over. It doesn't really have anybody to add to on the other side. What happens when I move the cosine over? It, it cancels out. So they just threw an extra piece in there that just kind of muddied up the problem but didn't really add anything to it. So root 2 tangent theta, cosine theta, plus tangent theta equals zero. And I think number five is kind of like that as well. There's, It looks really hard, and then you realize they just threw in some extra stuff that's going to go away. How am I going to factor this one? This is why I picked number six. can I do to factor that? It's the old factoring that people sometimes forget. There's a greatest common factor that we can take out of there. So tangent theta times root 2 cosine theta plus 1 equals 0. So I'm going to set both equal to 0. Tangent theta equals zero. I'm going to skip a step or two here. If I set the second piece equal to zero, subtract the one and divide by square root of two, which doesn't look exactly like unit circle stuff. But if I fix that, get negative root 2 over 2, and that looks like a unit circle answer. All right, so tangent equal to 0. Let's see. I don't, I don't really have tangent stuff memorized, but I do know that tangent is sine over cosine. So what I really want to know is where sine is equal to 0, because where sine is 0, then tangent would be 0. So that would be at 0. And for tangent, I just need the plus pi k to get all of them. Let's see. And then cosine is negative root 2 over 2. So cosine is negative on the left. And it's root 2 over 2 at the over 4s. So something over 4. 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. And what's the one in the third quadrant? What's this angle? 
Good. There's two ways to say it. You can write a separate statement that says 5 pi over 4. But if you're paying attention, and especially if you see cosine, you know that you can get there the other way and just do plus or minus. So the cosine rule still applies. The plus, if you find one answer, the other answer is minus whichever one you found. So there's my two sets of answers for number six. All right, so your assignment today is the rest of worksheet five, 10 problems. Um, if I haven't, I don't know that I've said it yet in here, the review worksheet is going to just be odds because it's kind of long. Again, it's tomorrow's assignment, but if you're peeking ahead, it's 30 questions, so let's just say it's the odds. I mean, we're not stuck doing a ton of problems. Besides, we're repeating ourselves now anyway, so we've got lots of practice. So if you're looking ahead to tomorrow's assignment, it will just be uh, the odds.